The Nike Zoom Fly 5 after 100 plus miles. Does it match up to the hate that it's getting online? Let's find out. So before we get into it, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, if you're subscribed, watching the content. Thanks so much, love you guys a lot. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Strava for all sorts of other updates related to racing and life and all sorts of other great things. So before we get into it, here's the specs for the shoe. I'll leave them somewhere where it doesn't really contrast with the whiteboard. It might end up actually on this side. We'll see. But yeah, let's uh, get into it. So as per usual on this channel, let's just check out what the outsoles are looking like at this time. Uh, just a little warning. I didn't really wipe them off like a towel too much. So there's a little bit of debris just kind of running around the shoe, as you can probably see here. Both from a mix of treadmill, indoor gym stuff to running outdoors with it. The shoe has multi-use basically in my case, minus lifting in it because of course when it comes to lifting with shoes I'd like to wear something that's a little more worn out and preferably not with a carbon plate, especially if you're doing squats or something like that. I think that's just like kind of overdoing it in my opinion. But anyways, yeah, let's get into it. So areas of interest um, on both shoes in this case is the four foot area, outer areas, and of course this area where the Zoom Fly is more or less, or the Zoom Fly, the Zoom X foam is being showcased. So as you can see here, we have our usual uh, wear on the right side of the shoe where the rubber is kind of beginning to burn and kind of parse out in this area and flatten. And we do have a bit of four foot wear and tear up in this area as well. I'm not experiencing any slippage at this point in time, 100 plus miles in. I am a little more cautious when it comes to raining, like raining, when it's running in the rain and it's a little bit icy, kind of like it was in my uh, yesterday running conditions where on concrete, it's not so bad. I'm not really concerned, but on bridges and other structures that don't have actual contact with the ground, I'm a little bit more cautious more i say contact with the earth i think that's the proper terminology so that's the right foot the left foot doesn't really showcase anything too much other than similar wear and tear just not as of the same extent which is okay and the only real thing to note with some of the experiences i'm having with the shoe are actually going to be in the left foot in particular so there are two uh worth noting one I've noticed this also with the Alpha Fly 2, which I'm going to have a video for real soon on my uh, further opinions on it. But there are two things going on. One, when you're walking in this shoe, it's an awkward walk in the sense that you're going to feel some of this rubber, this Zumex, I guess, uh, plastic plate, and some of the areas, so some of these like uh, pieces of the outsole have like a stick, kind of a bump stick on the ground, which if you're not running, it, it's quite an awkward sensation. It's like the foot doesn't have like a whole lot of stability in that sort of sense. And it's not to say that the stack height or the offset of the shoe could play a role in it. I'm sure they can, but it's particular to the design of what's going on here in the outsole. So as a walking shoe, I think there's very awkward elements to this shoe worth noting but as a running shoe this is i guess where we get into point number two i feel like this is probably going to end up more or less being a shorter video than usual we'll see because 100 plus miles in i think i should probably say more to the shoe and i guess i'll come up with things on the fly we'll see but point number two which is a big one which i can't necessarily blame on this shoe has happened in other shoes in the past but is more noticeable and more frequent is the pressure and the dull sore feeling in i guess it's the talus muscle or talus bone area near like the cuneiform uh bones in the first metatarsal on this particular foot and the reason i'm not entirely blaming this shoe uh for this type of sensation is that it's actually quite common in shoes with an eight millimeter offset or more that have a high stack height like this shoe that would give you this sort of sensation of pressure on the top of your foot that's basically what i'm trying to get at is that this particular textile area right here it pushes down on my foot in a way where it feels like it's sore and it's like almost developing a headache it's i don't know if it's like necessarily blood flow issues or anything like that i don't think there's any veins that run through the top of the foot in that area that are critical i guess i'm sure like over time when you're running in it the foot may like kind of swish in a way where you can open up that area but i digress even when you loosen the shoelace in this area 
uh, and you tie it back, this area is going to feel a bit open and it doesn't sit quite well. And the only real way to optimize your speed and your stride in this shoe is to have the lockdown the way it is. Now, the good news is that this pressure does subside after a while, maybe like a mile and a half, two miles. So you got to put in at least like an honest 10 to 15 minutes of running before this pressure in the cuneiform bone area begins to subside. I think the tendon that runs on the top there is probably something related to the metatarsals, but again, I haven't gone too far into that research. I just know that this area in particular, not too great sensational wise in this particular shoe. Other things worth noting is that I still, that's probably the question uh, worth questioning, I suppose, is I don't really understand all of the hate that this shoe gets because I don't think it's as bad as a lot of people make it out to be. Is it a Zoom Fly? Yes. Has the Zoom Fly series of shoes been awesome? No. Have they been good training partners to Nike and other racing shoes? Yes. So with all that considered, I would still choose this shoe over like the Zoom Fly 4 which was uh, last year's model. It was a lot more, that model I think was a lot more streamlined, but it was quite an aggressive shoe overall. And I guess my experience with that shoe was not too great during like the outdoor running season and whatnot. Uh, mostly that issue was because I had like a broken uh, fibula at the time. And in that kind of grand scheme of things, like running in a carbon plate stiffer shoe was good just to mobilize that area. But when it came to getting back up to speed i had other shoes in my lineup that could accomplish that goal pretty much and yeah so that stack height i remember was not nearly as high as this one this is like illegal territory with this 41 millimeter heel of course so that's what i end up recalling if i had to compare it to like the zoom fly 4 at uh bird's eye view but again i don't really understand why people hate this shoe in terms of it feeling like a brick I've actually enjoyed the ride of this shoe a lot, minus the pressure points in the top area of this foot. Like, it rides the way I expect a daily trainer to ride. Because if I'm trying to compare this to a Vaporfly or an Alpha Fly, there's just there's no way that you're gonna enjoy this shoe and consider it like an amazing daily trainer ride. Now there's some other brands of shoes that like I will give it credit. I this could totally be Stockholm syndrome in the sense that because I'm only using this shoe and comparing it to a last year model or other Nike branded shoes. There are other things on the market like maybe the On Cloud Monster or like a lot of Adidas shoes on the market that will probably blow my socks off literally or, you know, uh, metaphorically in this case, um, that are worth trying out that could in fact put the Zoom Fly 5 to shame. But can I have that hold that opinion right now? Not really, because I haven't tried those shoes. But in the time being, like given the conditions of you wanting to stay within the Nike brand, you want to explore the products that they have on the line that are for daily to distance training, that have carbon plate technology with a high stack height. The Zoom Fly 5 from those spec like those specific features is riding awfully well. And I don't hate the shoe. It's not like a Pegasus 38 or 39 that just like absolutely have the worst ride that I've experienced on a shoe in a while. So that being said, the combination of, you know, carbon plate technology, high stack height, a pretty streamlined, uh, more or less comfortable ride as you get into the shoe and kind of break it in on a daily basis. I like the Zoom Fly 5 for what it's worth and... I'll defend it for now as long as I don't try other shoes. Well, no, let me rephrase that. Once I start getting into the habit of trying some other shoes and getting into that, I'll start comparing this shoe with those as well. But as of right now with, you know, the budget I have for putting videos together and just like being able to buy shoes on the regular, that this is just the opinion I hold for it now. And I'm sure a lot of people in the comments have re recommended some Adidas shoes for me to try. And I will go into Adidas daily trainers eventually soon just to give them a spin. Like, I promise. It's just at this point in time, that's my thoughts on the Nike Zoom Fly 5. So um, if you guys have any questions or other comments about the shoe at 100 plus miles in, you know, just leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you have some Adidas or on shoes worth giving a spin, I'm kind of interested in trying those brands out as well just to see what's good on the market. 
uh, after, you know, this January, February, like post winter season kind of dealio. So I will leave the video here. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.